Hey guys, welcome to Steve Does Jobs. Today we'll be meeting with Mike, a tour guide who specializes in food and drink tours in Seoul. He'll be showing me around some of his favorite spots in Seoul and teaching me what it takes to become an awesome guide. Let's go. Oh, what's up, Mike? Oh, hey, man. man how, how you, you doing? doing? Good. Tell us who you are and uh, what are we going to be doing today? Uh, well, my name's Mike, and uh, I've been running food tours for about three and a half years now. I run uh, like a food and drinking uh, tour uh, all around uh, the back alleys of Seoul. Uh, so awesome. what we'll do is that we'll uh, start at the market first. Uh, one of the biggest markets uh, with some of the best food. So where are we at right now? Uh, we're at Kwangjang Market right now. It's one of the biggest and oldest uh, food markets that we have here in Seoul. I guess we'll uh, head over to uh, the noodle lady first. The lady that's really famous for the Netflix special. Oh, oh there she is. She's got that uh, signature hat. The infamous noodle yeah. lady. Yes. So. The noodle lady. So she's known for hand cut noodles. Yeah. Uh, but so she has two different types. So she has the hand cut noodles and the hand pulled noodles. Uh, personally, I prefer the hand pulled noodles a little bit more because the texture is a little bit chewier. It's a little bit more fun to eat. Yeah. So, uh, but it's it's all up to you. Okay. So without further ado, let's get into yeah. this, man. Bon appetit, or how do they say it in in Korea? Masuke bokkesimida. <laughs> wow. It's like I can feel her fingerprints embedded in the noodle. <laughs> wow. That's tasty. That's delightful. So these are the uh, infamous uh, mung bean pancakes. What's this, mung uh, bean? Mung bean is uh, basically like the same uh, bean that's in, uh, in the same family as like soybeans. So they basically uh, grind up all the uh, mung beans over there in that uh, stone grinder. Uh, uh -huh. So they have to use a stone grinder uh, because if it doesn't grind up fine enough, then it won't fry up properly because that is the batter. Uh, wow. We don't add in extra thickener or any starch or any flour or anything like that. Uh, so then we take that batter and they dump it in a big tub and then they hand mix with the beans for us, chives and leeks. Okay. And actually at this shop, they actually put a tiny bit of kimchi into it as well. Cheers. 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 Thank you. Come <laughs> <laughs> on, Nida. Yeah, you have to, you have to. Okay. Oh, 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 da, da, da. oh, we got to pay first. Masike mogoyo. Mokesimida. Masike mokesimida. Delightful. Is there like a sauce we can put on top? We can probably ask them. Look at them onions and that soy sauce. You know you want it. You got to come and get it. You got to talk to Mike. Come and get it. <laughs> he knows. It almost tastes like a hash brown from McDonald's, but on the inside, it's got so much like flavor. The real cherry on top is the uh, onion. Soaked in the soy sauce, perfect balance of greasy, mixed with fresh, and a little bit of salty. Ooh, 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 ooh. Got that nice little yin and yang. <laughs> So what do we got here? Uh, we have some live octopus. Live octopus? Sanakji. Sanakji. Ooh, and you can just eat it raw? Uh, yeah, so what, what she does is that she pulls it out and then uh, she'll stretch it out on the cutting board and cut it into tiny little pieces. And then she pours a little bit of uh, sesame oil and uh, sesame seeds and you dip it into like this uh, spicy uh, gochujang sauce, the chili paste sauce, and a little bit of uh, dry seaweed. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> How do I get him off? Whoa! Uh. I'm 
감사합니다. 감사합니다. Ooh, it's still moving. This is crazy, man. Okay. okay, so you just want to leave it in the front of your mouth for a few seconds, mm -hmm. and then you'll feel it suck to your teeth and your tongue and everything. Ooh. Yeah. And then to make sure that you chew it a little bit longer than you normally would, just to make sure that it stops moving before you decide to swallow it. Mmm, wow. It's sucking on my lip right now. You can taste the tequila from last night. <laughs> Chewy texture. I like the sesame oil on it. I mean, I don't know how to describe an octopus other than it tastes like an octopus. It's a little bit salty. I really like the sesame oil. And then the, uh, the gochujang, gochujang gives it like a nice, sweet, spicy flavor to it. It's putting up a fight in my mouth and I'm losing right now. That's what she said. Ha! I don't get it. Oh, jeez, you can eat it all? Yeah, I have to. I have a Korean mom, I know him. <laughs> Let's make sure you chew thoroughly. Yang 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 yang. Yang 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 yang. I couldn't let anything go to waste. I just, I hope I don't choke and die. If I do, I hope I get 100,000 subscribers from it. Well, I'll finish chewing. Yeah, because I don't want you like dying in the middle of like filming. You all right? Mm. Uh, now I'm gonna take you guys to uh, this uh, outdoor drinking area. Oh. And so this outdoor drinking area, uh, the only people that really knew about it were the Koreans that worked around there. Uh -huh. uh, but now uh, it's gotten really popular now. And so it's, uh, it's basically like a huge beer garden. Ooh. So uh, yeah, they basically copied it off of like the, like the German uh, like beer fest and everything, so. Taking me through a back alleyway. What's, what's up with this, Mike? <laughs> this is the first date. Whoa, there's a lot of people here. Yeah, there's always lots of people. Okay. Doesn't matter what day it is, Sunday or Monday. Wow, this is crazy. So uh, this is where we can do the uh, Chimek, the uh, chicken and beer okay. combination. All right, cool. I am down for some Chimek. <laughs> Cheers. There's a lot of tours out here in Seoul that are being offered. I, I guess what makes your tour better than others? I've traveled quite a bit in my life, so I, like, I know exactly what I would want as a, as a tourist. I actually provide like a proper, good, authentic tour. Uh, so I take you to places that uh, basically uh, you wouldn't be able to go to on your own, uh, mainly because of the language barrier. Uh, there's no pictures and there's no English menu and such. Um, and uh, this is like places like this where all the locals go. Uh, places that they wouldn't be able to find on their own or be able to find on Google. So basically like I go and check out probably five to six new places every week oh, okay. uh, to see if they're actually le uh, legit. I walk around and check out new food places, walk down random alleys, check out new bars and everything like that. So especially in Seoul, uh, everything kind of changes pretty, pretty quickly. Yeah, yeah. So you have to stay up to date all the time. Mm -hmm. So what do we have here? So here we have the uh, garlic fried chicken. Uh, this is what this uh, place is known for. Uh, so there's uh, tons of minced garlic on it, but it's actually not uh, very garlicky. It's actually quite sweet. It doesn't smell too garlicky, to be honest. No. It's really nice. Very flavorful, not too garlicky at all either. Yeah, it's sweet. It's almost good. like they, almost like they like marinate that garlic with like some sweet juice or something, you know? Pineapple juice. Oh. So. Can you tell us why that, well, like what your competitors lack, I guess? Uh, authenticity. Uh, so when they when they choose places, they tend to choose places that are not actually like underground like hidden places or unknown places uh, or places that are typically uh, that, like for instance like they have like Korean barbecue tours uh, like you don't need to go on a tour to, to experience Korean barbecue um, I understand I mean like maybe if like solo travelers sometimes like it can be a little difficult uh, but I mean I wish that they would take you to like proper places that like you wouldn't be able to find on Google or anything uh, more places that like uh, only the locals go to uh, where the meat quality is actually a lot better 
Uh, for instance, like um, like a lot of tourists uh, and foreigners have this misconception about uh, Korean barbecue. That you're supposed to have a ton of side dishes whenever you have uh, Korean barbecue. Uh, but to be honest, Koreans, whenever we go for Korean barbecue, we're going there for the meats. So we want good quality meats. So we use, so you have to either choose good quality meats, uh, very few side dishes, or bad quality meats, tons of side dishes. Like especially like the all you can eat barbecue places. Like that's yeah. where a lot of a lot of the tours take you to because it's cheap and you can eat as much as you want and you can and then the customers get full. It's just not really worth it. Right. You know. So I'd rather pay a little bit more money and go to uh, go to a nice proper place that where all the locals go and the quality of meats and everything and all the dishes are all really really good. So what does it take to be a good tour guide host? And you have to be very personable. So I mean, like your personality has to be right in order. So you have to be a very people person. Uh, get to know your uh, customers and everything, and uh, pay attention to them, listen to them, and uh, you know, have fun with them. Basically, you know, for the most part. I mean, for the first thing, and like you definitely have to do research. You know, you have to know your area. You have to know your foods. You have to know exactly where you're going to be taking everybody. Uh, and then when you're walking that course, you have to exactly know what to explain. Because I mean, you you have to think about. Uh, you have to basically put your shoes, uh, like your feet into, you know, like the tourist's shoes, right? And uh, think about like what kind of questions that they would ask you, what, th what they would be interested with. So you have to explain a lot of things on the way because like you don't want to have too much awkward silence in the, in the middle of like walking, right? So you always want to explain certain things, you know, maybe answer a few questions, you know. It depends on the customer. So sometimes you have customers that are a little bit more curious. So they'll ask you a little bit more questions. So it's a little bit easier on you then. Uh, but also at the same time, you have to know your stuff so that you can be able to answer all of these questions for them, right? So, so where are we at right now? We're at the last place. It's it's nighttime. We're outside. We're sitting on plastic chairs. Well, uh, this is actually the uh, main area for all the uh, food tents. Uh, this is where it all started from the original area. Uh, there's about five or six of these areas in and, in and around Seoul. Yeah. And uh, this is where uh, all the locals come and uh, hang out and basically uh, get plenty of drinks in and then uh, get ready for the, for the big night out. Cool. So. Cool. Okay. Um, so I noticed that like at every place that we've been at, um, you seem to know someone. How important is uh, managing relationships or just having relationships with these people as a tour guide? So like for instance like the last place uh, yeah. it's a super busy place right so especially on the weekends like it's almost impossible to get a table uh, but um, but the service usually help me out now because because they know me and I go there pretty often and so um, uh, they're always you know helping me to try to get a table so okay. it's very it's very useful very effective so you know so the three most important things um, for being a tour guide are research uh, authenticity and then relationship management, basically fostering relationships with the owners or with the restaurants, establishments that you're going to go to. Is yeah, yeah, that's that's about that's about right. Yeah. Okay. Cool. Would you like to add anything else that um, I would need to know or somebody else would need to know um, before they, you know, start their journey um, on to becoming a tour guide? Uh, I mean, like basically, I mean, like just uh, be well prepared. You know. So I mean, like. Uh, seriously cover every single uh, little you know corner that, that there is uh, to know uh, be like basically just put your you know put, put your feet inside the, the tourist shoes and then you know like you'll know exactly what you know like what type of qu types of questions that you would want to ask you know right. some you know things that you're very curious about um, so you need to answer all of those questions and then also uh, be very familiar with your areas and your uh, locations that you take people to. Mm -hmm. uh, you have to know the history and the whole background about everything mm -hmm. uh, so you can give them the whole background of, of the place that, that you take them to. Mm -hmm. So, Wow, so what is this right here? It smells like pork, peppers, onions, a little bit of peppers. I already said peppers. <laughs> Oh my god, that is bomb. Mm. It feels like it has so much more moisture. There's so much more flavor inside. Like perfect blend of chewiness and spice. Mm. That is delicious. Oh. Cheers. Mike? Cool. I'm thankful that you know you've given me all the advice and information that I need to know to now become a tour guide. 
So thank you, man. Yeah, and, it was um, really nice meeting you. It was a really fun time. Mm -hmm. Hopefully I'll see you out here, you know, maybe yeah, yeah. giving a few tours, you know. See you guys next time. Later. Yeah.